let me ask you another sort of philosophical type of question, but not really actually. Um, it seems that thought experiments are used, so it's not just mathematics that makes progress in theoretical physics, but thought experiments do. They did for Einstein as well. They did for a lot of a lot of great physicists throughout history. Over the years, how, how's your ability to generate thought experiments or just your intuition about some of these weird things like quantum mechanics or uh, string theory or quantum gravity or yeah, even general relativity? How's your intuition improved over the years? Have you been able to make progress? The hard part in physics is most problems are uh, either doable, most problems that a theoretical calculation that a theoretical physicist would do, there, there's no end of problems <laughs> whose answer is uninteresting. Can be solved, mm -hmm. but the answer is uninteresting. There's also no end of problems that are very interesting, some of which you've asked me, mm -hmm but we don't have a clue how to solve them. And when first presented with a problem, almost every problem is one or the other. It's, it's the jackpot when you find one that isn't one or the other. Mm -hmm. And- uh, It seems like there's a gray area between the two, right? That's where you should be looking. <laughs> well, I wouldn't describe it as a gray area, I would describe it as a knife edge. <laughs> so it's a very small <laughs> small area. <laughs> there isn't like a huge yeah. area with a sign, here lie problems that are doable and people want to know the answer. And that's a, in some deep sense, that's where timing is everything with physics, with, with science, with discovery. With timing. I mean, I think earlier in my career, I, I erred more on the side of problems that were not solvable. Uh, the ambition of youth. <laughs> yeah. What 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 made you fall in love with physics at first? If we can go back to the early days. You said uh, black holes were there in the beginning, but what made you do you remember what really made you fall in love? You know, I wanted to I wanted to reach nirvana and I sort of realized that wasn't going to happen and <laughs> then after that I wanted to know the meaning of life and I realized I wasn't probably wasn't going to figure that out and then I wanted to like understand, you know, justice and socialism and world things and couldn't figure those out either. And the, the, <laughs> so every, the, sim the simplest- Smaller and smaller problems. Smaller and smaller black problems. <laughs> and then, I mean, most of this I'm talking about adolescence, you know, but, but, but um, it was the biggest problem that I thought that there was uh, a prospect of but not 100%, you know? And I was definitely ready to spend my my life in the wilderness knocking my head against the wall, but I haven't had to. I haven't solved them, but I've said enough interesting things that you're 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 interviewing me. So so I'm not in the wilderness, but yeah, so do you remember the the early days do you have do you feel nostalgic when you think back to the ideas, the circumstances that led down, that led you down this, the path towards black holes, towards theoretical physics, towards the tools of physics, towards this really fascinating world of theoretical physics? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't add nostalgia to it because it's not like a you know, a summer in Italy or something. It's it's like there, there there's there there's <laughs> results that are there that sure. that that people are, and that's what's that's what's so gratifying. I mean, of course, one's name disappears from these these things, um, unless you're Einstein or Newton or something. You're people are not going to remember my name in 50 years? Well, most, no, basically every name will be forgotten in hundreds of years, yeah. Yeah. And Are I, you able to, by the way, um, 
love the idea, the exploration of ideas themselves without the names, the recognition, yeah, yeah, that's the fame, what, that's the award. what I'm saying. So I have not. I hope someday, but I have not. Um, you know, there are some experiments now to verify some of my predictions about you know properties of gravity and so on. But I ha I have not like you know most of what I've done is in the you know it could happen still it's still a logical possibility that everything having to do with string theory and the uh i mean as i as we mentioned i'm betting the farm that it's not but but it is a log indeed a logical possibility that that people always say can you believe lex fridman interviewed elon musk and kenya west and then he interviewed <laughs> strominger who was on this this, working on this theory that just completely went into the yeah completely went into the toilet you know uh, I'm gonna make <laughs> I just, I'm gonna get uh, with a wife I don't have I'm gonna make a public statement she'll be on stage I'll say I'm really sorry I made this giant mistake of, of platforming this wild-eyed physicist that believed for decades in the power of theoretical physics yes no <laughs> like you said <laughs> so that could happen. It could happen. It yeah. could happen. It's it's in the and of course, if that couldn't happen, yeah, it wouldn't be real exploration, right? Absolutely. And um, so, but I, I, you know, I do take a lot of satisfaction that some of the things I discovered are, at the minimum, mathematical truths, and they're still. So you don't have that sort of nostalgic feeling of it being something that was gone and and uh and I'm still making discoveries now that I'm as excited about we'll see if they hold the test of time that that stand the test of time that these other ones did that but that I'm as excited about as I was about those when I when I when I made them, I am easily excitable, as my friends will tell you. <laughs> well, one interesting thing about you is, is and I have been very excited about things which turned out to be completely wrong. You know, well, yeah. that's the the excitement is a precondition for uh, uh, for breakthroughs. Um, but you are also somebody like just like you said, you don't have a cynical view of the modern state of physics. No. So, so there's a lot of people that glorify like the early days of string theory and that you know all the yeah, that we made in the twenties. So. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're saying like this this to you uh might be one of, if not the most exciting times to be a theoretical physicist. Like uh when when uh the alien civilizations five hundred years from now that visit Earth will look back, they'll they'll think the twenty first century, some of the biggest discoveries ever were made in yeah, the twenty first century. When they have a when they have a measurement of string theory, the fun's over. No, but then, it, then we have to go on to something new, you know. <laughs> no, there's deep. There's oh, there's going to be deep. The fun is over. Oh man! Um, but there is an end to the Nile, right? I mean, there that there's is a, there. I, uh, that's, who that's told good. you? <laughs> some some Weinberg guy. Uh, <laughs>